breaking news, and unfortunately it's the news that none of us wanted to hear, but we suspected was coming. Hurricane Melissa is now officially a Category 5 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 160 miles an hour and a barometric pressure of 917 millibars as measured by the hurricane hunters. And it is currently taking its turn towards the island of Jamaica and is set to make landfall later today and will almost certainly have life-changing life-altering impacts for the island of Jamaica. Okay, folks, uh, not really a whole lot to talk about on the satellite image today. Um, basically, we are in, you know, just watch mode now. Uh, there's really not much more that needs to be discussed on this hurricane. The path is um, pretty set in stone, though. Over the last few hours, probably since about 10 p.m. last night, the hurricane has been doing it, it the hurricane kind of did this little southwest jog earlier tonight and then west again and it now it appears to be starting to make its turn towards the coast of jamaica though the turn does appear to be happening a little later than the national hurricane center and the model suggested uh, the track has shifted west overnight so this time yesterday the hurricane was expected to turn and make a hit kind of in the central jamaica area at that time that's not at this time it's not really validating the hurricane is now appears by model data and the national hurricane uh to be making a a western jamaica hit which honestly is better news for the island as most of the uh heavily populated areas to the east side of the island will get spared the worst of the of the of the storm's brunt certainly will not get spared in any kind of sense of a way it's, this is still a very large, very powerful Category 5 hurricane, but they will be spared the absolute worst, which is going to be your eye wall here uh, going ashore uh, in Jamaica. If you've never ridden through a hurricane before, if you're watching from Jamaica, if you're you know watching from one of these other islands that are in the path of the hurricane, um, the a lot of people think the entire hurricane is the 160 uh, mile an hour part. Uh, honestly, you know, if you're watching from Jamaica and, and you can still at this time, though, I, I do think it's too late. You know, the, the roads are probably really muddy and washed out. Um, but if you safely can, you know, try to avoid being in this immediate eyewall area here. This 20 you know, miles, 10 miles uh, around the eyewall is typically the most powerful part of the hurricane. And the wind force drops off substantially uh, as you go out from the center. Really, a few miles with these, you know, just think of them as, as really, really, really wide tornadoes. Um, the, the center is is typically the worst part wind-wise, and the rest of the storm is is a lot uh, uh, more tame uh, than it is at the center. So if there's any um, silver lining that I can find in this situation for the folks of Jamaica right now is that this does appear to be tracking a little more west of the on the island than originally expected. Uh, it did took a little jog to the west last night, and hopefully that will spare some folks and the more populated eastern part of the island uh, the worst of its effects. But honestly, folks, uh, the entire island is going to be feeling it at this point. So current conditions right now, Hurricane Melissa is currently moving to the northwest at about three miles an hour. Uh, she was moving uh, west, like I said, most of the night, now beginning to make that turn towards Jamaica. And this thing is just crawling, folks. It is still so, so slow. Uh, I mean, it, it is amp, kind of amp when a, when a hurricane slows down like this, it kind of amplifies the effects that it's having on the area. As you can see from the National Hurricane Center's uh, predicted rainfall amount, I mean, still up to 40 inches of rain in eastern Jamaica, uh, still up to 16 inches of rain to go uh, for western Haiti, and now they're starting to populate Cuba with up to 20 inches of rain uh, down near Guantanamo in that southern uh, southeastern part of Cuba. I mean, and this is to go, folks. This is the four-day rainfall forecast. This means that they still think that there is uh, up to 40 inches of rain to go, and they've already received several inches of rain. Haiti has already received received dozens of inches of rain at this point and they've still got 16 inches to go dominican republic we still got 8 to 12 inches to go um it's just 
this thing is moving so slowly and it's it's, it's really a worst case scenario because you're combined with a, a historic <clears throat> and rare category five hurricane with the fact that it's only moving at three miles an hour it's been sitting in this area of the world for a better part of a week and these um folks down here are just been getting hammered and the a uh, unfortunately i just think the aftermath of this is going to be uh, insane and something we talk about for a long, long, long time. Another interesting thing to note <clears throat> that is a little unusual with Hurricane Melissa is, you know, she she's very powerful, but she's also very large. Not very large, but she's a large hurricane. And usually, when these hurricanes hit this Cat Five status, they kind of shrink and shrink and shrink and turn into this really tight buzz saw moving through the ocean. And that's not really what you're seeing out of Melissa right now. As a matter of fact, she she appears to be getting larger on satellite loop uh, you get some convection here to the southeast that's blowing up uh, of the storm you've got some uh, you know thunderstorms blowing up on her tail right here over the last couple of hours and it just basically it looks like she's expanding uh, her wind field whereas these category 5 hurricanes typically shrink their wind field pretty dramatically because it's very hard to keep a storm so large so powerful in order for the the, the, the silver lining with these cat fives is usually that they're small right because they, they have to be to be that powerful hurricane Melissa right now is still on the larger side for a hurricane enveloping almost the entire southern caribbean okay taking a look at the infrared satellite loop here you can see that uh melissa is beginning to get those really really tall uh cold top thunderstorms around her inner core around the eye wall i mean that is a sign of, of, of further intensification at this point and and at this point i mean this thing just looks like you know if you were to put a picture of a hurricane in a textbook it would be this one but as far as a hurricane structure goes um, this is about as textbook as it gets here folks Okay, so the National Hurricane Center's official forecast track, because uh, it is going to have effects beyond uh, Jamaica at this point. Fortunately for everybody, the hurricane does appear to be speeding up over the next few days, though not by much. This is a pretty fast pace here between two Thursday and Friday. 24 hours here it's going to be going from the southern tip of florida latitude up to the you know south carolina north carolina border latitude uh and that's about the speed we're used to seeing these hurricanes go uh but also uh between monday and thursday it's only going to gain about 10 degrees or eight degrees of latitude uh, in this forecast track, which is still pretty slow, faster than it's moving right now, uh, but still going to take a pretty slow jog over the uh, Southern Caribbean. Okay, so the National Hurricane Center has narrowed its cone pretty much. This uh, forecast is basically uh, locked in stone. A few shifts left and right here are always expected with these systems, but it does appear that uh, Hurricane Melissa will move to the northwest over the next few hours and then take its turn to the northeast. Uh, striking the island of Jamaica on that western side and then an eastern Cuba hit and then a southern Bahamas hit and then out to sea. Folks that should be preparing for this storm right now, Jamaica, your preparation should be done by now and you should be sheltering in place. Uh, the eastern tip of Cuba, uh, we should be preparing, finishing up our preparations. You will take a direct hit. I am interested in seeing what the strength is going to be on the other side of the island of Jamaica. Jamaica is a very mountainous country and uh, hurricanes do not like mountains. They they tend to shred them apart pretty severely. I've, I've actually seen... Uh, in Cuba uh, before never in Jamaica so I'm very interested in seeing what happens but uh, Cuba uh, before has taken a cat 4 hurricane and shredded it to a 1 I've seen a cat, or, cat 3 hurricane get shredded to nothing and just not appear on the other side uh, of Cuba if it comes at it at a certain angle so if there's any silver lining here folks is that Jamaica will take the brunt of the storm and hopefully the mountains do weaken it before it hits eastern Cuba and then the mountains of Cuba will then weaken it further before it hits uh, the Bahamas as you can see the National Hurricane Center is depicting that on their map as they have a major hurricane going into Jamaica and then a major hurricane as well making landfall in Cuba but then they changed the graphic to just the H which is below a category 3 hurricane as it crosses over to the Bahamas. So I'm guessing the National Hurricane Center thinks this is going to be a one or a two. We'll look at the model guidance later as it crosses the Southern Bahamas. 
and then out to sea. Other impacts of the storm, the western coast of Haiti is not out of the woods yet, folks. They are getting the wet side of the storm. The hurricane is is pushed into, is broken out into quadrants, right? The wettest part of the storm is always going to be your northeast quadrant here. Uh, this is where most of the rain bands and the rain gets dumped. Haiti's kind of going to be in that northeastern part of the storm, and it will receive uh, an additional, I think, 20 inches of rain and wind as this hurricane scoots by to its west. Additional impacts, folks, is take, folks taking cruises to the Bahamas, uh, Eastern Caribbean, Dominican, uh, Cuba, Jamaica, uh, even Mexico at this point. Uh, I've heard widespread reports of Royal Caribbean, uh, Carnival cruises, Disney cruises uh, at this point, rerouting cruises to different. I heard of, haven't heard of any cancellations yet, but the, um, the reality is that this thing is moving so slow and it's going right through the heart of the Caribbean and um, there's not much these cruise ship companies can do. Uh, they don't want to risk their ships or the lives of their crew or passengers uh, by driving through a Category 5 hurricane. Okay, fake folks, just taking a look at the National Hurricane Center uh, arrival of winds chart. So as you can see, Hurricane Force winds arriving now basically in jamaica and then as we go through um the week here tuesday at 2 a.m we're going to start seeing effects in southern cuba and then by 8 a.m the full effects uh, of hurricane melissa will be uh, being felt in cuba and then tuesday 8 p.m is the arrival of the hurricane force winds uh for the bahamas and then uh and the folks in the Bahamas and sailing through the Bahamas can expect those winds to continue till about Wednesday at 8 p.m. So you're going to be looking at, if you're visiting the Bahamas, you're going to be looking at about a 24-hour uh, time period where the conditions are not going to be great. So it's about Tuesday th from 8 p.m. through Wednesday at 8 p.m. Folks in the Dominican Republic and Haiti, like I said before, still not out of the woods yet. Um you know, kind of Eastern Dominican, sorry, Western Dominican Republic and Eastern Haiti, you're still going to be in that wind field for about 24 hours from Tuesday at 8 a.m. to Tuesday at 8 p.m., maybe a little longer, maybe into Wednesday morning for the folks of Western Haiti and the East uh, and Dominican Republic. Okay, I was going to take a look at the <laughs> half speed model today to kind of see what the strength is going to look like. But honestly, I think we're going to use the H warp because this model is already not verifying the National Hurricane Center's uh, in Miami say that this hurricane now has a low of 917 millibars. And at the making of this video and the release of this uh, half B model, it's at 926. So the hurricane right now is a nine millibars lower uh, than it is in the model data, kind of making this model uh, invalid at this point and not really good for strength since the hurricane is already significantly stronger than it is even at the beginning of the model run. But we can kind of use this model to see what the effects of Jamaica will be on its strength. So it, it enters Jamaica 928 millibar low, and as it crosses 936, 946, breaking up 955. So we're going to lose roughly 25 millibars of strength, which is good news for the island of Cuba as it crosses over Jamaica, gets a little messy on the other side. And it, the warm, the waters here are quite warm between Jamaica and Cuba, and it will have a chance to get its act back together very, very briefly before it hits the eastern side of Cuba. But this model uh, doesn't really agree with that. It actually loses strength by a couple of millibars uh, before it hits and then loses strength even larger. Because like I said, the uh, Cuba is a, is a much larger landmass than Jamaica. Jamaica will further break up the storm and coming out on the other side, we've got a 965 millibar kind of, you know, still category one, category two hurricane, much larger, much messier, not as tight and powerful as it is down in Jamaica will hit the Southern Bahamas and then get swept out to sea. Let's take a look at the H wharf model because I think it's a little more uh, accurate as far as strength goes for this particular hurricane. You can see it depicts well a 928 millibar low, 917 here as it approaches the island, which is exactly what it is right now. And this is basically where the hurricane is right now. So I think the H wharf is doing a pretty good job of depicting strength here. 921 as it approaches, 926. So losing strength to the hurricane as we approach the shallow waters of Jamaica and the mountains. 928. 9.35 as it pushes ashore, so it thinks it's going to go maybe cat four before it makes landfall, which is an unprecedented. It's not unheard of. Uh, the, the hurricane could do a last-minute eyewall replacement cycle in which it loses uh, a few miles an hour of wind, maybe gets bumped down to a cat four. That's not unheard of. It does happen all the time. Also, the waters around these islands are shallower. The, the hurricane is starting to feel the effects of the mountain. 
mountains as it approaches. It is not unheard of for these hurricanes to lose a little bit of strength as it approaches the island. Now, on this model, it just goes over uh, the little western tip of Jamaica there. It doesn't lose much strength. It loses about uh, 12 millibars of strength there as it heads toward the island of Cuba. 949 from 935. So, we're we talking about 15 millibars of strength and then it crosses the island of, of cuba further breaks up we kind of lose our core there down to 968 millibars and gets his act together just a little before it hits um the the bahamas and heads out to sea this would be the best case scenario for the bahamas and for cuba uh you know not you know not not a good scenario overall, uh, but better better. Uh, 956 millibar hurricane is a lot better than 917 millibar hurricane. This is a Cat 3 hurricane uh, going into the southeastern coast of Cuba here, and then we're maybe down to a one or a tropical storm when it comes out the other side on the H warp. We're going to have to see what plays out, folks. Uh, the island of Cuba and Jamaica with their mountains are notorious for chewing up hurricanes and um, it'll just be interesting to see what happens. Okay, just going to take a quick look at the GFS model, folks. Not a whole lot to talk about with the models because uh, the the they're all in agreement and the modeling is is pretty spot on at this point. We uh, we did take a little west jog overnight uh, where it was looking to hit central Jamaica. Now western Jamaica appears to be more in the crosshairs than central Jamaica. It's going to take that a turn uh, at some point today. Eventually, it is already starting to make that turn and then go over Cuba and the southern Bahamas as previously said. Quick look at the Euro model here. Uh, basically the same thing, little jog to the west. Actually takes the actually Euro does a pretty good job of showing that southwestern dip it did last night. Up to the uh, western side of Jamaica there, and then to the northeast and out to sea. Okay, folks, the grand ensemble density here map uh, from polarwx.com. Basically telling the same story it's been telling all week. Uh, except for we did take a slight jog on this map as well to the west, uh, kind of going over that, that western part of, of Jamaica now and out to the northeast. All right, folks, that's going to be it for today. Like I said, not a whole lot to talk about in the storm, not a whole lot left to do, but just sit and wait. We will be here throughout the day um, monitoring the effects on Jamaica, monitoring the effects on the entire Southern Caribbean, and we'll be posting as necessary. Remember to like and subscribe so you always stay updated. For now, we'll see you next time.